Couch Surfers. Chapter 14. Orville sealed his mother's window shut to block out the sound of that crying man. The smell of Cindy's flesh and hair burning. It was terrible, and his mother was still yelling at him. What happened to that girl out there? Did you harm her? And he could almost taste the girl's burning skin on his lips. And it was the same smell he remembered when father had put his hand on the burner. Orville to fight the memories from returning as he sat next to mother in her rocking chair. She demanded to know the truth. Don't lie to mother. Jose pushed her. I saw him do it. It was all starting to get terrible again, just like the last time a woman was here and he couldn't shake seeing the orgy last night and the sight of Bonnie's naked body covered in blood. Yes, beautiful Bonnie reduced to shame. Another woman he could never have. Another woman that was scared, frightened, especially with all the screaming inside the garage. He had scared her now, frightened her. Thank God for the latch on the window and the curtains. It had stopped the sound of Jose's crying and mother was tired of blocking her ears. She had been trying to sleep, trying to bury her head in a pillow. At least there was the motion of the rocking chair to always calm her. But his mind was not as calm. Did that girl like you? Was she the one that we invited to stay over? He couldn't stop watching the rocking chair and didn't want to hear her questions anymore. No more. He knelt beside the bed and blocked his ears, and he was shivering. It wasn't her mother. He couldn't remember what happened in the garage. Did I push her? Damn. I should have taken my pills. Maybe I did. Suddenly, a terrible memory haunted him. Dark visions he had kept away, all of them rushing back too fast. He remembered being a young boy on his birthday with a group of classmates over. He was sitting with Tina, a classmate under the tree near the garage, and his hand was on her leg, and she'd brought his hand up into her breasts, and she'd smiled at him, and he came in to plant a kiss to her cheek. Always so sweet. But then that menacing boy came, the one with the blonde hair, and he arrived calling him ugly, poking fun at his eyebrows, and then he pushed Orville and sent him into the dirt, and the boy kicked and hit him, and all the others around him circled around and laughed. And then that boy grabbed the girl and ran away. How could he forget it? How? It was my birthday, and they were supposed to be my friends, all of them, and the memories could not stop flooding in. He recalled rising from the dirt, clutching his hair, and the sky had been gray like it was now, and the rain was about to fall. Even then, he couldn't control the anger he'd felt and his hatred for the other boy. The sound of those laughing classmates echoed in his mind. It had haunted him to see them curling their indexes over their eyes to imitate his thick eyebrows. And this was before what happened to the last girl and before he'd heard Cindy scream in the fire and now. He needed to escape himself, but there was nowhere to go, never a place to find shelter. And he heard more screaming in his head and more haunting voices. All those memories in his past, how terrible it was. And not even the latch on the window could stop it. Nothing could seal out the sounds mother never heard. Nothing could ever stop them, not even the pills. His anger was rising, and he was losing control just like the first time he did it with the girl. He remembered what he did to the boy on the side of the bridge after he stole her away. He could still remember the heavy weight of the baseball bat in his hand as he waited for the boy to pass the tree. Yes, and he remembered that car approaching, and the feeling of that bat was supreme in his hands. And then he heard the boy scream as he swung into perfect revenge and the car struck him too, and it sent the bully into the curb and there was the sound of brakes screeching and he saw the car stop. He remembered the sight of that boy's face and his eyes as they went gray, and he laid there toppled over in the road, blood rising over the lips, and his body went into convulsions. No regrets, no remorse. After all, he hit me first. That's what I told the cops. It was self-defense, they believed me. They had no other choice. 
the boy couldn't remember after waking from a two-month coma in the hospital. And he, well, he was lucky to live anyways, damn it. Orville opened his eyes and saw the back of Mother's gray hair, and he remembered his father saying to become wise like her, once saying, Wisdom is in the grays, son. And yes, and wasn't that a true saying? It was a saying a man must have when he is no longer a boy, and his mother's voice still speaks. Yes, and he cuffed his hands over his ears to hear her voice no more, because he suddenly remembered what else happened years ago. Yes, and it just before those burns on his hand. His father holding the butcher knife, the same one downstairs, and he was forcing Orville's hand to the burner. Orville clenched his eyes shut and forced his memory back to last night, and Bonnie's blood in the bedroom, and to the butcher knife in the cake, and he remembered piecing it all together when he saw the scar on his hand. He had to keep his eyes shut and try to block it all out, but the images were stuck, and there was no escape. Never was. Never will be. Oh God, don't ever let me remember that. Never again, please. And he must have been talking out loud about the girl who burned alive in the fire because mother was upset. What happened to that girl? What are you hiding from me? Which girl? The one you're talking about. Which one is that? Are you out of your mind? I told you to take your medicine. I told you. Are you out of your mind? I, I, I don't remember that. Mother, I'm sorry, but I just can't. There's a fire out there, damn it. 